Okay, everybody, I finally got around to seeing Halloween Ends, and I'm going to give you my views on this movie. I've seen every single Halloween movie since the beginning. Um, I personally uh, don't mind sequels. I've always loved the old Frankenstein movies, Dracula movies, and so, so I'm, I'm used to seeing sequels a lot. And uh, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th is my man. But uh, I have to say, at this particular point, I'm sick and tired of Michael Myers, really. Enough is enough. You know, I, I just feel that way. I mean, uh, th this franchise has had so many different directions. You know, you got the original a couple of films, and then you take a direction where you go into Michael being a hitman for a, uh, a cult, and the Druids or whatever the hell they were. And then you had another line where you go into... Uh, H2O, and then you have another line here where you skip all these movies and you just go from the original 1978 Halloween to the 2018 uh, reboot, and that takes off from there. Enough, but let's talk about this movie, and I'm going to try to keep it fairly spoiler-free. So if you haven't seen the movie, I don't think too much is going to be spoiled here for you. So take that as it is, you know, maybe you don't want to watch, maybe you, you take a chance, whatever. All right, um, I got some notes here. What can I tell you? Uh, I would say that uh, this movie really, I didn't know what to expect. I tried to avoid hearing anything about it. The only vibe that I had gotten was that fans weren't too keen on it. It, it kind of was a, not a, a good Halloween movie. That's kind of what I heard. And I would concur. Uh, most of the time while I was watching this Halloween film, I felt that this could be like the one of the worst in the series. I think the worst in the series personally is Halloween Resurrection with maybe uh, Halloween 5 being a close second. Mind you, I'm not counting Rob Zombie's films. Those don't exist as far as I'm concerned. But out of the, uh, the regular series, yeah. But this one uh, was, uh, you know, pretty weak. At first I thought to myself, yeah, this could be like the second worst movie in the, the series and now uh, after seeing the whole thing I found a little satisfaction by the time it was over near the end so I might say it's one of the weaker ones I wouldn't say worst I'd say weaker all right well anyway, the thing I don't understand about this movie is a lot of this movie most of this movie is concerned with another character that's not even Michael Myers at all we have a male babysitter who's a kind of geeky, kind of nerdy, and he's either 21 years old or 20-something years old, and uh, he's played by uh, Rohan Campbell, and uh, if I'm saying the name correctly, I don't know. This guy, I gotta say, he gives a pretty good performance. I mean, he plays a really good, creepy kind of guy, and um, because of uh, ex experience that he has in the prologue, so to speak, before the credits roll at the beginning, we realize that he's unhinged and uh, he has to deal with something. That's all I'll tell you. And as a result of that, he becomes kind of a, a possible psychopath in the making. And he just happens <laughs> to wind up with Laurie Strode's granddaughter. Uh, Laurie Strode's granddaughter has a, a kind of crush on him and they wind up uh, hooking up, getting together. Don't know why. I mean, you can see this guy uh, is a few can short of a six pack but uh, a lot of people pick on him and he's kind of like this kind of uh, sympathetic character that's kind of like going to go off the deep end at any minute and most of the film is concerned with him and I think that's what a lot of people are upset about why are we dealing with this character we came here to see Michael Myers not so much this character because as time goes on this guy is sort of like a a partner of Michael Myers or a, a wannabe Michael Myers kind of thing and we have we have to deal with him through most of it and Michael Myers is like a cameo through most of this movie you don't really get much Michael Myers until the end all right and then now speaking of cameos and things uh let's talk about uh Laurie Strode as played by Jamie Lee Curtis look I still say the best movie featuring the return of Laurie Strode was a 1998's Halloween H2O. I still think that was Jamie Lee's best comeback. I think she still looked great. I think she still delivered the goods. She was intense. And I liked the showdown in H2O between her and Michael. Since then, I'm getting just as tired of seeing Jamie Lee in these movies again and again and again as I am of seeing Michael Myers again and again and again. Now, the last movie, Halloween Kills, 
we didn't see a lot of Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee. She was in the hospital. What was the point of having her in the film? She was hardly in the movie. Uh, in this movie, I gotta say, at least we have a lot of Jamie Lee's character. The problem is she kind of comes in and out, goes here, comes and goes in and out if, with no real purpose, I don't think, until the end. It's like, she's there, but who cares kind of thing. So she doesn't really do that much. And speaking of not doing much, as I say, Michael Myers doesn't do much. And it's more the other babysitter geek that's doing a lot. Until uh, finally, after I'm going to say about 90 minutes, it's close to 90 minutes that I'm watching this, shaking my head, wondering where this thing's going. The last 30 minutes or so uh, kicks into high gear. Uh, as far as the kills go in this movie, uh, we don't get many kills. Not nearly as good as the last film. Uh, but there is one good kill I won't ruin for you. I'll just tell you it involves a uh, DJ. And the DJ kill is probably one of the best in the entire series and one of the best in all slasher film history. So you got one really classic gem of a kill scene for those of you who go for that sort of thing. And uh, I will say also, I didn't mention, uh, Laurie Strode's granddaughter is played by Andy Matichak. She's very good. I think she's good. I think the performance by her and the performance, as I said, by Mr. Campbell as the 20-something-year-old geek and psychopath in the making is terrific. I just don't know why they thought that people who would want to see a Michael Myers film would have much interest in seeing a movie about somebody else entirely going close to the deep end. Why in the world? We're not paying for that. That's not what we're watching for. So finally, uh, you know, of course, Michael Myers eventually is going to do his thing in the movie. And at the end, you do have the, the awaited clash. Laurie Strode versus Michael Myers. What is this, for the third time? Fourth time? Something like that? Now, the question is, does it deliver the, the confrontation? I'd say it delivers. It's worth watching. And as I say, uh, the last 30 minutes kind of almost made up for the first hour and, a, and 15 or hour and a half. Or maybe it didn't make up for it. I don't know. But uh, it was it was a satisfying uh, fight between Laurie and Michael. I gotta say, it was it was fun. And now the ending of the movie, which I'm not really going to spoil 100%, but maybe a little bit, so shut this off, or maybe not, is that the question is, people want to know, is Michael really dead? Well, look, I've seen enough Friday the 13th films. I've seen enough Halloween films. I've seen enough monster films of, of you know, the Frankenstein monster and everything, to know that nobody ever really dies, okay? It, even if it looks like they're dead. I mean, look how good the ending, I thought the ending to H2O was perfect, and they found a way to screw that up, you know, for Halloween Resurrection. So is this the end of Michael Myers? Let's put it this way. By the end of the film, it certainly would appear that way. It would appear that uh, Michael Myers, uh, you know, it's going to be tough for him never come back after this one. But, you know, I remember seeing movies where they say, hey, you know what? That last film, it was all a dream. It never really happened. It was a dream. So all they got to do is say that uh, the whole thing was somebody's imagination, and you get another sequel. I've even seen movies like where maybe uh, the villain gets destroyed and there's nothing but ashes, right? They're dead. They're ashes. They're cremated. And in the next movie, all you got to do is have a satanic cult or something, spill a little blood on the ashes, and all of a sudden the form comes back. So don't give me this stuff that this is the end of Michael Myers, and not necessarily, you know, uh, hopefully, because, you know, I for one am sick of it. Yeah, this is a weak entry in a series. It's got its moments, but it's kind of like two different films, and I don't, I, you know, two different stories trying to come together, and I don't know what they were thinking with that. So on a scale of one to four stars, I'm going to give Halloween Ends two stars. Thanks, folks.